Hey everyone, I just want to show you a motor here that I've converted over to a low RPM generator. So you can see it's just an induction motor, it's a little fan motor, 0.9 of an amp. And so this was out of a dehumidifier. An induction motor here is typically not used as a generator or an alternator, whatever you want to call it. Now it will work, if you haven't heard of this, they do work. This particular one, no one really does this. They usually use a squirrel cage motor to um, to use as a generator. And how it's done is it's it's done with capacitors. They connect capacitors to the output of the actual motor, the induction motor. And then if you get the right capacitance and the right RPM, you'll be able to use it as a generator. So an induction motor is not really the greatest uh, for a generator, but they do work. So now this one here I've modified, and what I've done to this one is it's pretty simple. I'll just pop it apart, and what I've done, so there's you don't need to use capacitors or anything like that to actually get this one working, which would not work with a wind generator setup. Now I know people are doing these wind generator uh, conversions. There's lots of them on, on uh, the internet and the, I think one of the best ones is just a direct conversion is a ceiling fan motor. This little fan motor, just pop it apart and we'll take a look inside. And so what I've done is I've modified the rotor on this. So we'll pop the rotor out and there's a real rough job here uh, on this because I don't have uh, any high-end equipment. I just have a grinder. So it's very basic uh, work here. So what I've done is I've just chopped it here and chopped it here so I, then I can drop in a permanent magnet. So this here is a permanent magnet. It's a, it's a neodymium uh, magnet and it's out of a hard drive. So these are a pretty powerful little magnet and so it, it takes a little bit of force to get that actually off there. So these are strong little magnets but now you can get all kinds of magnets uh, on the internet. You can order all kinds, but this is just a recycled magnet. So now I've placed the magnets onto the rotor. So what's happening now is when the rotor is being turned, we're having induction happen here. Oh, my little washers. So now I've only put two magnets on here. Uh, I haven't tried putting more, but what you could do is, is to make this better, you could actually get rounded uh, magnets which would conform with the rotor, or you could get little uh, rectangles, get all kinds of different magnets. There's hundreds and hundreds of different kinds that you can get off the internet. And so maybe a better way to do this would be to make this more octagon shaped and have a magnet in each corner. Okay, so I've connected the uh, meter up. I'll just put this little stick on here so I can turn the thing. So I'm not spinning it very fast, that's only um, low RPM, so it'll hit about 4 volts. Okay, so I'm just going to turn on this 12 volt DC motor here, it's connected to a battery charger and a rheostat. The rheostats uh, can control the RPM. So I've glued the magnets to the rotor, so I'm hoping that they'll hold together, but um, I'm going to run the motor up. So let's say there's a good wind speed right there, so you can see that... We're at 14, almost 14, so there's there's a perfect voltage right there for charging batteries, about 14 and a half volts. So that's probably a good wind speed right there. And then we can crank this thing up a bit and see what we can get. So that's full RPM, 50 volts. Getting an arc. There we go. See that? Very little current. Okay, so if you look in here, between the magnet and the stator, there's a big gap. If you can see, there's the magnet, and you can see the stator. So now what that means is this here isn't going to really be that efficient. It's not really going to um, give you that much current. But because of the air gap, you have to consider with wind generators is there's very little drag. So this motor here is now there's very little drag on it. A propeller could spin effortlessly in the wind. So with this DC permanent magnet brush motor here, you can see there's a lot of drag on this one. So every segment is there's a 
there's a resistance. You can feel the resistance. So I've just hooked up an automotive peanut bulb to the little generator here, and I'll just turn it on. And so you can see that it doesn't put out much wattage. Uh, that's because of I only have two magnets on the rotor, and the air gap between the rotor and the stator is fairly large, so it's not going to be very efficient. So it's not a very um, not a very good uh, conversion here, but it could be done much better. So this is just an example of how you could convert a induction motor like this, a little tiny induction motor, to work as an alternator or a generator. So you can see that it doesn't put out much wattage, but it does work. So you could scale this up. You could step this up a notch and actually make this work much better than what's going on here. I only have two magnets on the road. So now, because this induction motor here now is an alternator, and it's going to put out AC, you have to then convert it to DC to be able to charge like a little battery pack or a battery uh, bank. So what you're going to have to do is then rectify this with a bridge rectifier. So I have one here. This is an all-in-one unit, and this was out of a computer power supply. You can find these in all kinds of electronics, but... This one, sometimes you'll see just four diodes put together in an arrangement. What you can do is hook this up. The AC is in the middle, and you get your negative and positive on the outside. So now I'm just hooked up to a little battery pack here, and you can just see if I turn this thing on, the voltage on the meter going up. So it's charging the battery pack right now. So I've just hooked the little, little alternator here to a cap, and we'll see juice there is here. So that's just at low speed. I'll crank it up. Should be charged up now. stuck to the screwdriver. I hate when that happens. So now I've hooked a little transformer here to the induction motor and we're just going to turn it up and that's a 200 volt capacitor so let's turn this up a little bit so now you can see the voltage. So we're at, we're at 50 volts. A little more. Okay, so we're, we're basically at the limit of that cap. So we're at 200 volts almost. So what I'm doing here, don't try at home because you can see that there's some very high voltages on here. And it's not worth getting fried. Right there, there's over 200 volts. That cap's only rated for 200 volts. So, um, well, that was just a fan motor induction motor converted to a alternator and thank you for watching